In this video, we'll learn how to digitize the catch bins and then how do you assign the catch bins to a particular junction where the catch bin will drain into. So let's go back to our water lens and this is where we were at. Now again, while we digitize the catch bins, we have to remember that uh, the nomenclature of the catch bins you would be using and the catch bins, the chronology of catch bins and their nomenclature which I'll be digitizing have to be same because whatever data I enter for a particular catchment, you also are required to enter the same data for a particular catchment. Therefore, the names of our both our catchments have to be same. Uh, so you have been also provided with this drawing which tells you where these catchments are. So for example, my first catchment is uh, close to J1 and that is what I'll start drawing. So I go to hydrology and we have sub catchments. So that is what my sub catchment is and I'll add an object. So you add a sub catchment by clicking left clicking and I don't need to adhere to the exact shape of uh, the sub catchment here because what I can do is I can add the area data as, uh, as and when in the Excel editor which we have already configured. Now to close this loop what you have to do is right click and your catchment will be created. So right now it is showing catchment 3. What I can do is I can quickly edit this and make this catchment 1. So this is what also you can do if the problem uh, persists with you. So I had initially digitized two catchments and then I had deleted them and therefore you see the we started with catchment 3. So this is catchment 1 for me and similarly I will uh, digitize the catchment 2 which is close to J2. In case uh, the nomenclature here also is different, what I'll do is I'll also change the name of my catchment once it is digitized. So this is my catchment too. Again, we right click to close this. So it is right now showing <coughs> catchment 3. I'll again edit this to make it catchment 2. Again, I'll look where my catchment 3 is. So my catchment 3 is near J4 and let me digitize my catchment 3. So click on the add button and just digitize left click left click left click and to close the catchment you press the right click. So now we are at uh, C3 so I don't no longer need to change the, num uh, the numbers and let's see where the fifth catchment is so it is close to uh, sorry the fourth catchment so this fourth catchment is near J6 which I am now going to digitize so let me just digitize some shape. And again right click to close this so this is close to catchment 6 uh, uh, close to junction 6 the catchment 4 and now catchment 5 which is close to junction 7 so this is catchment 5 now my catchment 6 is near junction 8 this is my catchment 8 and finally my catchment 9. You can adhere to the actual shape of the catchment if you wanted to but since we are going to add the data of uh, the particular catchment through excel editors it's alright not to digitize the exact shape of the catchment. So now once our catchments are digitized, digitized the next thing is to identify which uh, junction these catchments will be draining into. So I will start with the catchment 1. Uh, before we start, just ensure that you have digitized the, all the seven catchments uh, and they are exactly like uh, in the same sequence or attached to the same junctions as given in the drawing to you. Also ensure that their nomenclature is also exactly the same because you will be entering the data in the same sequence and therefore the nomenclature of these catchments also have to be same. So I will go back here. So now if I wanted to say that this catchment is draining into J1 what I need to do is I need to go on that junction click on this pen button and it will open the properties of the catchment I need to go to the outlet tag and here in the outlet I just need to add J1 and just simply close this so once you do that you'll see there's a dotted line connecting C1 to junction 1 which means now your junction 1 is uh, sorry the catchment one is draining into 
the junction 1. So, I will go to the next catchment and edit the catchment and similarly here the C2 is training into J2. So, I need to just add J2 here and again hopefully you will see a dotted line. So, like you see here again what I will do is because I have already zoomed in a lot I will go and uh, you know uh, extend zoom it to extends. So, now again similarly what I need to do is connect the catchment 3 with junction 4. So, you just simply need to type J4 to connect to the junction 4. So, again you should see a dotted line and same way we need to connect C4 with junction 3 sorry C4 with junction 6. So, let me connect C4 go to properties I can also go to properties by right clicking instead of editing from here. So, this is connected to J6 So, in case you have doubts, uh, it is better to refer and go back and refer the drawing. It will give you a clear idea which uh, junction is uh, associated with which catchment. So, I will now go to junction 5, uh, catchment 5 and link it to junction 7. So, this is done. And now, finally, my junction 6, which is here to junction, catchment 6, sorry, to junction 8 you should see a dotted line here and my final catchment which is C7 I have to link it to junction 9. So, this is what my network should look like which is now associated all catchments sub catchments are associated with different junctions. So, this is what my network should look like. Next up we will add a rain gauge in our system because that is uh, that will provide you the data for rainfall. So, you what you have to do is go to hydrology and check rain gauge and you have to click on the add button and within your uh, area you will have to provide a rain gauge somewhere. So, let us see we provide a rain gauge uh, here ok and next up what you need to do is add properties of this rain gauge. Uh, so, once I have this rain gauge what I can do is I can click it and if you open this what you see is uh, you see where the this thing is located what is format of rainfall and how do you enter the rainfall data. So, there is one source which is time series and either I can add data from time series or I can add a file. We will add uh, the data using both these methods. So, first let us go with the time series first. So, before I add data as time series I need to configure a time series. So, let us configure a time series and come back to the rain gauge. So, for time series in the project menu itself you see there is something called a time series. So, this is the time series and click on add. So, I am calling this time series or TS1. Uh, I do not need a description here and I just need to add uh, my day a month, day and year. So, I am calling this let us say 2022. Sorry, uh, my month is 0, 08. Uh, day is let us say this is 30th and year is 2022. And similarly, I need to do it for uh, how whatever years I want. So, let me just add more data. So, I am assuming here that our rainfall is for a duration of 30 uh, sorry 6 hours. And therefore, we need six uh, column, uh, six rows of data. Thirty and two zero two two. Sorry, and finally the last row. Now, hours are simply one, two, three, four. 6 because I do not need to add. So, let me just get in their format so that there are no issues later. And this is 3, this is 4, this is 5, and this is 6. 
now what I'll do is I also would have given you the data of uh, the rainfall uh, for different periods so from the folder of the videos what you need to do is look at the values of rainfall and enter the rainfall values here so the first hour rainfall is 15 the second hour rainfall is 20 the third hour rainfall is 22 the fourth hour rainfall is 27 the fifth hour it is 12 and finally it is 10 so all these values just remember are in mm uh, now i can click ok and my time series is also configured here i'll go back to my rain gauge and edit the rain gauge and here you see the time series now i can add a series so now ts1 is my data and the units of my rainfall are in mm so this is my rain gauge and we are done so rain gauge now has the rainfall data so this is one method of adding the data what i can also do is i can also add data through a file like i uh, told you in the videos folder we have also given you a dat file with through which you can enter this data what i'll do for the purpose of this exercise i'll add one more rain gauge so this is my rg2 let's say rg2 and i'll click on the edit button and again instead of what i the only change what i need to do is instead of time series i need to add the file and now what i need to do is i need to look at the file and browse the file from my data so this is my file which is given to you the rg1 and i'll to click open the station id is rg1 unfortunately i have not changed it here but i'll let me call this rg2 and uh, no uh, the file has the data in rg1 so let me call this rg1 and let's say the rainfall is in mm so this is another way of adding the rainfall data so you can add the data through a dat file let me show you what a dat file looks like so this is my dat file which had the data so it's nothing but uh, a, a form format of a file so what we have here is the name of the rain gauge the year the month the day the hour the minute and the rainfall intensity so this is what is the format of the data and each row has one data cell so this is the file if you want to add your own rainfall data you can edit this file and add the uh, rainfall data directly into uh, the rain gauge or SWMM uh, what this will do is it will save you some time of uh, adding the data here uh, for the time being I'll just delete this because I don't need this anymore uh, this was just for demonstration and now let's add these rain gauges to all the catchments so for that what you do is go to edit and uh, let's say select all and then again click on edit and it will tell you it will give you one more button which is group edit so go on group edit and you'll see sub catchments here in the tag property i'll go to rain gauge and i want the rain gauge to be replaced by rg1 what this does is uh, like we associated junction as outputs with each catchment all rain gauges will now be associated uh, all catchments will now be associated with to this rain gauge one so they'll take the properties of rainfall from this rain gauge now let's click ok yes i want to do that now once i do that i can go and check back on my properties of the sub catchments and if i look at the properties you should see that instead of rain gauge being blank now we have rg1 as the rain gauge